And hello, everyone. This is Matt Orozco from Macabre Daily here. Very excited to bring you another interview with up from two filmmakers from an upcoming horror film, Squealer, which is coming out from Lionsgate this Friday, November 3rd. I'm joined by director Andy Armstrong as, and writer, as well as co-writer Danielle Bergio um, and producer. So welcome to you both, and, and thank you for the time today. Thank you. Thanks uh, for my having pleasure. us. Well, I know we're short on time, so I'm going to try and keep the questions quick and, and, and coming. So the first one is, you know, how did you all get together and start working on Squealer? I'll let Danielle. Okay, I'll start it off. So Andy and I um, had worked together in a different capacity many, many years prior, and we'd always toyed around with the idea of doing a movie together. And way back when he had told me this story about this pig farmer turned serial killer and he said I'd really like to make this movie one day and then he was off doing a million other movies and I think seven years went by oh, wow. uh, and then when we reunited and we decided we wanted to write something together uh, he said okay let's you know let's do it the stars have aligned we have time what are what are what should we write about and I was like uh hello pig farmer turned serial killer that you told me seven years ago it's <laughs> still the story is still stuck with me um and he he agreed. Um, and so it really, I mean, we we just hit the page running, I guess you could say. Uh, we did make a very conscious effort to in, leave it inspired by a true story. So it is in part a true story that I hope will appeal to the true crime fans out there. But also we took quite a lot of liberties. We, um, you know, I'd say it's a half-half. It's, it's a bit of a hybrid situation where a lot of it is just made up by us uh, in hopes to be respectful to the the victims and the victim's family. This story is not that old. So there's still a lot of people out there that might be attached to the story. And um, we just, we didn't really want to tread too deeply on that. Just uh, keep that clean and respectful. So, and also to pay homage to the horror genre. So it's a bit of a blend and I hope we did that well. Oh, you did. Well, thank you, Danielle. And um, over to you, Andy, you know, what was it about the Robert Picton story that was so fascinating? I mean, aside from the story itself is kind of uh, odd and absurd, very Ed Gein-like, but what is it that drew you to it? I, I, I love the idea that it was, that it's in everybody's backyard. It's it, it, and, and in a beautiful backyard as well. I mean, the real story took place in Vancouver. We consciously chose uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico, because it again, it's a just a beautiful landscape, and I love the idea of this horrible violence going on in sort of while life is happily being lived in these in these places. It's not a it's not a uh, you know a dark, foggy, rainy night. It's you know it's a beautiful beautiful high desert landscape and it's uh you know he comes into town with his with his sausages it's sort of uh he, he's he's everywhere and he's he's there but it's it's the the darkness is sort of uh is behind all that and i i, I like that i like the fact that it was a, a contradiction in terms of the beautiful this beauty and uh normal life with this horror going on around it I, for me that was the that was that's re, for me that's real horror you know the, the fact that it could happen anywhere to anyone yeah i mean especially in canada where it's not like serial killers are as prolific as they are here in the united states where canada doesn't have you know the laundry list of serial killers they can do documentaries or, or films upon um and i would absolutely agree with you i think the normalcy of having this kind of thing happen in your backyard new mexico being a perfect place for that i mean Breaking Brad, breaking Breaking Bad, obviously, is the another example of this kind of out of this world thing happening in this very kind of normal pedestrian location. Um, so I think that really came through in the filmmaking. And thank you. It, That's good. And and Danielle, I really like what you said about you know kind of acknowledging the fictionalization of these because I think a lot of times films, especially in the true crime genre, have a hard time being able to delineate between those two simply mm. because you want to bring viewers in with the kind of tenacity and, provo and, and provocative aspect of the, of, the, of the truth. But at the same time, the truth isn't always as dramatic um, as a film needs it to be in order for it to really come out the screen and have an effect on you. So 
for the both of you, I mean, how difficult was it to manage the truth versus fiction component of the story, the story writing? Well, in this particular story, there are so many juicy bits and so many of our characters were inspired by this true story. So I think we, you know, it was pretty easy to grab onto the, the bigger building blocks and then say, okay, like, what do we need to weave in and how can we take this and, and make more of a horror film out of it and so the entire uh, journey of the character Lisa that is all completely just you know made up and I think it's her story that weaves into a bit of the true story that brings the two of them together and then it's like okay well then how do we you know how do we reach a climax in this film and how do we do all that and that was just you know um, Andy is always full of so many creative brilliant ideas so I lean on him a lot for those he's just can spew them out. Um, and then I tend to say like, this one works and that one doesn't. Mm. And um, we work quite well together that way. So it was a, it was a pretty fast process. We, we wrote this film in just a few months time, really. Oh, wow. That, that, that is pretty quick. And, you know, yeah. I'm glad to see, um, but you know, when, when you have, when, you have, when you're working on something and kind of all things are aligned, uh, I think the creative process tends to be a little bit more fast moving and breakneck. Mm -hmm. And I, I should also clarify, like, I, I will say that for the first draft and then, you know, cut to by the end of filming, there were about 237 drafts. Yeah. So the writing never stops. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, to get a first draft done was, was fairly quick. <laughs> it's good that you were both on that, right? Because you both have the perspective because it's not often that the writers are privy to the production kind of oh. every day on set. And so you don't have that control of what was intended on the page versus what is being brought to the screen. Um, and, you know, I wanted to ask you both, I'll start with you, Andy, and then go to you, Danielle, you know, what was the most rewarding process, part of this process, particularly for Squealer, and then what was one of the most challenging parts for you? Uh, every day was absolutely in incredibly rewarding. It was, I, I've, I've, you know, been around the movie business sort of a long, long time, and there was no, ne nothing I've ever worked on was as, just as, as pleasant and fulfilling each day, every single actor came with their, not only their A game, but they came with options and ideas and, you know, and, the, and they were so supportive. I mean, I, to, to have done this movie in the time that we did it uh, with a uh, sort of less productive uh, characters uh, would have been impossible. These, every single, person that came both crew and cast just brought their best to it it was just a really it was one of those really sort of blessed things where you know everything sort of fell into place with with the with with people bringing really good ideas and really good sort of tastes whether they whether it's to a character or whether it was camera people or whatever they they everybody really sort of brought their a game and for that it was so every day was satisfying i couldn't i couldn't really tell you which day would be better than others and and uh, in terms of the the sort of least rewarding thing was probably um you know the time it took through post production and all that sort of stuff but but even that it all it all came together very very well really and we're we you know we were just uh we sort of pinching ourselves all the time that it was amazing that it has, you know, that, that we've had this amount of support from this number of people that uh, did it all so pleasantly as well. It was just a real, it was real pleasure to do it every day to turn up. It was just, a, it was for me, it was just a, a, a sort of luxury. Thank you, Andy. How about you, Danielle? Um, I'm going to say, I think for me, there's, there's so many things to, for me to have been excited about, but seeing Ronnie actually embody the role of Squealer. So Ronnie is an actor that I worked with so, so many years ago. And when we first decided to write this story, I said to Andy, I have our Squealer. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you trust me? And so I introduced them and they hit it off. And we actually, uh, you know, we had to fight a bit because, you know, we had to 
to fight a bit to have him. He's maybe not the big name that he should be. And at one point in time, uh, we lost him with scheduling. Wow. And then a miracle happened and we ended up getting him back. So, because for me, it was always him. And I just didn't want to imagine anyone else in the role. Like it, it just always was Ronnie. So to see Ronnie show up on set and to get to give the performance that he did for me was probably the most satisfying part. Yeah. Um, Cause I think he just knocked it out of the park. He's amazing. Um, and in terms of challenges for me, I think this is my first um, experience as a writer and a producer on a feature. And I think I didn't realize the complexity of all the different hats I was going to be wearing and mm. juggling. And I kind of thought like, oh, you write the script and then it's done. You know, you show up on set and you just start doing your work, but the writing's done. No, there was still so much to be done there. And then as a producer, again, it was the first time I had done something quite like that. So uh, I love a challenge and I had a lot of them and it was great. I mean, it was very fulfilling and the the cast and the crew and Andy especially were insanely supportive. Um, so I feel like I grew and I learned so much and in the end it was very satisfying, but in the moment it definitely was challenging. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard. It's easy to step back from a situation after, you know, you have your chance to gather your hindsight and reflect on it. Um, but in the moment, things always tend to feel a little more chaotic. And I'm glad you got Ronnie, because um, if you look at a picture of Robert Picton, uh, this is no offense to Ronnie, but he definitely carries the, you know, the similar vibe oh, that Ronnie Picton does. <laughs> no, I he mean, does it in a weird way while still having like sex appeal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He definitely, he's not as, it's not as kind of, um, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for a word I can't find, but you know, but if you see a picture of Robert Picton, you know what I mean? Yeah. He looks a little yeah, more yeah. welcoming than Robert Picton does. But no, he no. but he plays him very very well and then and and brings that layer of like charm that I I don't know that Picton necessarily had but Ronnie definitely has it and uh, I'm very happy that Squealer has it. Yeah, he 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 just brought so much to it, just so just on on every level, you know, on on the the gentleness and the the, the pleasantness everyone can go to the sort of super dark side of a guy wandering around with a knife and things, but it's, it's those other passive nice parts that are so difficult to get right. I think with a, a character like him and he just, he just owned it. You know, I don't, I don't know how else to put it really. I mean, every day he would, uh, I would give him so little direction really. I mean, I, I'd take the sort of credit as a, as a director, but in lots of ways, every every actor we had just, you know, they brought it to the set and they just were that character. I could just sit back and watch them really. It was fantastic. So it's such a, such a rewarding process for me. Yeah, I can imagine it's, it's a little, it makes your, both of your jobs a little bit easier as both oh. bringing the production and the writing side to, and the uh, directing side to it, to have a talented cast that's going to collaborate, that bring, you know, their full selves to the character and to the, to the, to the experience. Um, and I think that shows up on screen. You know, I, I really enjoyed the film. I think it's definitely a a callback to some of the like, you know, in a way, it's like an, a higher end '80s slasher movie. Absolutely, it's got a little bit more yeah. sheen to it, but it's still got a little bit of that grime and sleaze. So yeah. I really enjoyed it quite a bit. And I know we're up yeah. on our time, but I wanted to say to you both, thank you, uh, thank for, you for taking that. the time to speak with us today at Macabre Daily. And just to remind everyone watching this that Squealer will be out in theaters on digital on demand. Uh, nationwide this Friday, uh, November 3rd. So make sure to check it out. It's from Lionsgate. And again, thank you to Andy Armstrong and Dan Danielle Bergio for your time today. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.